in the bustling headquarters of Wilson Enterprises. A quarterly business meeting was underway in the spacious conference room. The atmosphere was charged with anticipation as employees gathered to discuss the company's performance over the past quarter and strategize for the future. John Wilson, a mid-level manager known for his analytical skills, took the lead in presenting the business quarterly report. He stood confidently at the front of the room, a projector casting graphs and charts onto the screen behind him. His colleagues sat attentively, scribbling notes and nodding in agreement as he delved into the details of the report. As we can see from the numbers, John began, pointing at the graph, our sales have shown a steady increase, but there's still room for improvement. I propose we implement a targeted marketing strategy to reach a wider audience and capitalize on untapped markets. He continued to outline his ideas for boosting sales and increasing profits, addressing each aspect of the report with a pragmatic approach. The room buzzed with discussion as colleagues chimed in with their thoughts and suggestions. After 30 minutes of fruitful discussion, the meeting drew to a close. The participants filed out of the conference room, dispersing to their respective workstations. John, however, was approached by his boss, Mr Richard Thompson, who asked him to join him in his office for a private discussion. Inside the boss's office, the two sat across from each other, the quarterly report spread out on the desk between them. Mr Thompson, a seasoned executive with a reputation for keen business acumen, looked impressed. John, I must say, your insights and suggestions in the meeting were outstanding. Your analysis of the quarterly report was thorough and well thought out. Mr. Thompson commented. John, humbled by the praise, responded modestly. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. I believe there's always room for improvement and I'm dedicated to contributing to the company's success. The boss continued. Your proposed strategies align with our long-term goals. I appreciate your commitment and innovative thinking. Keep up the good work, John. I see a bright future for you here at Wilson Enterprises. Grateful for the recognition, John left the boss's office and returned to his desk. Energised by the positive feedback, he immersed himself in his tasks, determined to implement the proposed strategies. As lunchtime approached, the office buzzed with activity as employees headed to the break room or nearby restaurants. John, however, decided to make the most of his time by ordering lunch to his desk. He dialed the number of his favourite local deli, placing an order for a sandwich and a cup of coffee. The food arrived promptly and John delved into his work while enjoying his meal. Engrossed in his tasks, he barely noticed the aromatic coffee sitting perilously close to his hand. Unfortunately, his momentary distraction led to an inadvertent nudge and the coffee cup toppled over, spilling its contents onto the desk. Reacting quickly, John grabbed his phone and dialed the number for the cleaning office. Hi, uh, this is John Anderson from the fourth floor. Could you please send someone to clean up a spill at my desk? Coffee mishap. The voice on the other end assured him that help was on the way. John sighed, realising that even in the midst of productive work, small accidents could happen. He took a moment to clean up the mess as best he could, ensuring minimal disruption to his workflow. As the janitor, a young and pleasant-looking woman, arrived at John's desk with a mop in hand, John looked up from his work and met her gaze. She smiled warmly, her eyes reflecting a genuine friendliness. Hi there, I'm Lucy, she introduced herself. Looks like you've got a bit of a situation here. Mind showing me where the spill is? John nodded and gestured toward the desk. Uh, sure, it's right here. Coffee decided to take a detour from my cup. Lucy chuckled as she assessed the mess. Happens more often than you'd think. Don't worry, I'll have it cleaned up in a jiffy. As Lucy got to work, John couldn't help but notice her simple yet striking demeanour. He decided to strike up a conversation. Oh, thanks, by the way. Where's Mrs. Karen today? You're usually the dynamic duo cleaning team. Lucy smiled while wiping the spilt coffee. 
Mrs. Karen is on leave today, so they called me in to fill for the day. I'm here to make sure everything stays spick and span. John nodded appreciatively. Well, thanks for stepping in. I appreciate the help. No problem at all, Lucy replied, her mop gliding across the desk. It's what I'm here for. You guys keep the place busy, and I keep it clean. As Lucy finished cleaning, she made her way toward the door. John, intrigued by the friendly janitor, stopped her before she could leave. Hey, uh, thanks again. Uh, By the way, what's your name? I don't think we've met before. She smiled. I'm Lucy, as I mentioned earlier, just your friendly neighbourhood janitor. John chuckled. Got it, Lucy. Thanks for your help. Have a good one. With a nod, Lucy left John to his work. He watched her walk away, appreciating the unexpected encounter. Once Lucy was out of sight, John returned to his tasks, the spilt coffee incident already becoming a light-hearted memory. With a nod, John returned to his desk. Now devoid of any coffee-related mishaps, the incident served as a light-hearted reminder to balance, focus, with awareness. As he resumed his work, John reflected on the productive meeting, the commendation from his boss and the simple joys of a working lunch, accidents included. As the day progressed, John delved back into the flow of work. Colleagues filled the office, discussions echoed through the hallways, and the hum of productivity resumed. The afternoon sun cast a warm glow through the windows as the team collaborated on various projects and tasks. As evening approached, the workday wound down. Colleagues packed up their belongings, bid farewell to each other and headed home. John found himself stepping out of the office into the cool evening. As he walked towards the street, he noticed Lucy, the new janitor, also leaving the building. She seemed lost in thought, not paying much attention to her surroundings. John stole a glance, a brief moment of curiosity before making his way to the waiting taxi. Inside the cab, he sank into the seat, his mind still processing the events of the day. The taxi weaved through the city streets, finally bringing him to his doorstep. John paid the fare climbed out of the taxi and entered his apartment. Once inside, he freshened up and headed to the kitchen to fix himself a simple meal. As he stirred a pot on the stove, his mum walked in, a warm smile on her face. You're cooking again, John. (laughs) You should have woken me up. I could have prepared something for you, she said, a hint of concern in her voice. John turned a spatula in hand. It's okay, mum. You work hard too. I can handle a simple meal. His mum sighed. You're such a good son. How was your day? Any exciting news? John smiled. Well, the presentation went well. The boss was impressed with the quarterly report and he even commended my suggestions for the future. Oh, that's wonderful, dear. I'm proud of you. His mum replied, a glint of pride in her eyes. As they sat down for dinner, his mum couldn't help but express her thoughts. John, I've been thinking, why do you want to work in such a low-profile job? This is our company and you could easily join me at the top. Why change surname and go through for a job? John paused, taking a moment to gather his thoughts. Mum, I I appreciate the offer. I want to work on my abilities first. I want to understand the company from the ground up. I'm not ready to take over just yet. Plus, I'm content with where I am. I get to know the internal workings of the company better this way. His mum nodded, accepting his perspective. Okay, dear. It's your choice, but remember the company is yours, and one day, you'll have to take charge. Keep that in mind. After dinner, John bid his mum good night and headed to his room. The next day brought a new set of challenges, as a target was assigned to the team. They had one month to achieve it, and the pressure was on. John, fueled by the drive to prove himself, threw himself into the work. Days turned into nights as the team hustled to meet the deadline. Meetings were frequent, strategies were discussed and revised, and everyone worked diligently towards the common goal. John, despite the workload, occasionally caught glimpses of Lucy as she went about her cleaning duties. The brief encounters served as a reminder of the diverse roles that contributed to the functioning of the company. As the deadline loomed closer, John found himself working late into the night, reviewing reports and coordinating with his team. 
The hustle and bustle of the office became a constant soundtrack to his efforts. Lucy, too, was a sporadic presence, quietly going about her tasks, occasionally exchanging a nod of acknowledgement with John. One evening, as the team gathered for a final meeting before the big presentation, John couldn't help but reflect on the interconnectedness of the company. Each person, from the top executives to the janitorial staff, played a crucial role in the company's success. It was a realisation that fueled his determination to some day take the reins and lead the company forward. The day of the presentation arrived, and the team, led by John, presented their findings, strategies and achievements. The atmosphere in the room was tense, but the hard work and dedication of the team shone through. The executives nodded in approval, and the target was not only met, but exceeded. The days that followed returned to a more normal pace. The team continued their work, albeit with a sense of accomplishment and renewed motivation. John occasionally glimpsed Lucy in the hallways, a silent reminder of the interconnected web that made up the company. As John settled back into his routine, he couldn't help but feel a subtle shift in the air. The experiences of the past month had given him a deeper understanding of the company, its people and its aspirations. One morning, the soft hum of the cleaning equipment echoed through the corridors of Wilson Enterprises as Lucy, the dedicated janitor, went about her morning routine. The clock on the wall indicated seven o'clock, and she found herself in her duties, ensuring the office was spotless for the day ahead. As Lucy worked diligently, the door to the office opened, and John entered, briefcase in hand. He greeted Lucy with a nod, acknowledging her presence, and then proceeded towards his office. Lucy, fueled by curiosity, glanced at the clock. The early hour intrigued her. Perhaps there was an urgent task or an early meeting. With a shrug, she returned to her cleaning, determined to maintain the pristine condition of the office. After finishing her tasks, Lucy headed to the coffee machine to take a well-deserved break. As she prepared a cup of coffee for herself, she couldn't help but appreciate the quiet morning atmosphere. The office, still relatively empty, held a serene quality that was often overshadowed by the hustle and bustle of the day. Carrying her cup of coffee, Lucy made her way to a bench near the window. The city outside was just beginning to stir, with people rushing to start their day. Lucy sat down, taking a moment to enjoy the calm before the storm. Just as she was lost in her thoughts, John emerged from his office, making his way towards the coffee machine. He noticed Lucy sitting by the window and decided to join her. With a friendly smile, he greeted her. Uh, good morning, Lucy. Mind if I join you for a cup of coffee? Lucy smiled back, gesturing to the space beside her. Of course, John. Feel free to have a seat. John took a seat, cradling his cup of coffee. The two of them sat there sipping their drinks and enjoying a peaceful ambiance of the early morning. So what brings you here so early, John? Lucy asked, breaking the silence. John chuckled. <laughs> well... There's a lot on my plate these days. Thought I'd get an early start to catch up on some work. Lucy nodded in understanding. I get it. Mornings can be a great time to focus and get things done without too many distractions. As they continued chatting, the conversation flowed effortlessly. They discussed work, shared a few laughs and discovered common interests. It was a simple yet pleasant exchange that bridged the gap between their different roles in the company. After a while, Lucy checked the time and realised it was time for her to resume her duties. Oh, I should get back to work. It was nice chatting with you, John. Likewise, Lucy, John replied, finishing the last sip of his coffee. Oh, thanks for the company. Have a great day. With a friendly wave, Lucy took her leave, leaving John to enjoy the last moments of his coffee break. As she returned to her cleaning duties, John gathered his things and headed back to his office, ready to tackle the day's challenges. The day unfolded with its usual rhythm. Colleagues filled the office, meetings took place and the constant hum of activity resumed. Lucy, too, continued her tasks, ensuring the office remained immaculate amidst the growing whirlwind of work. 
One day, John found himself engrossed in various meetings and tasks, his morning coffee breaking a distant memory. Lucy, on the other hand, navigated through the office, her cleaning cart trailing behind her like a trusty companion. It wasn't until the evening that their paths crossed again. John, wrapping up a meeting, decided to take a short break. As he passed by the coffee machine, he remembered the morning's pleasant encounter with Lucy and decided to see if she was around. To his delight, he found Lucy taking a brief break near the window. She looked up, offering a warm smile as John approached. Hey again, John. Need another caffeine boost? John chuckled. Oh, absolutely. I could use another cup to get through the rest of the day. Lucy nodded, heading towards the coffee machine. She prepared a cup for John and they resumed their positions on the bench, this time with the city lights glittering outside the window. So, how's your day going? John inquired, taking a sip of the freshly brewed coffee. Lucy sighed contentedly. Oh, busy, <laughs> as always, but it's good. Keeps me on my toes. How about you? John leaned back, gazing out the window. Oh, the usual, you know. Meetings, reports, the whole nine yards, but it's manageable. They continued their conversation, delving into topics beyond the confines of the office. They talked about hobbies and favourite movies and shared anecdotes from their respective lives. The simplicity of the moments and the camaraderie between two individuals from different corners of the company felt refreshing. As their break came to an end, Lucy checked the time and realised it was time to resume her duties. Oh, I should get back to cleaning. The night crew will be in soon and I want everything in order. John nodded, finishing the last of his coffee. Mm, thanks for the chat, Lucy. It was a nice break from the usual grind. Any time, John. It's good to take a breather once in a while, Lucy replied with a smile. They both stood with a nod of farewell. Lucy headed back to her cleaning duties while John returned to his office. The rest of the evening passed in a blur of emails, reports and last-minute tasks. As the clock struck the end of the workday, John gathered his belongings and headed towards the exit. Lucy, finishing her cleaning tasks, noticed him passing by and waved goodbye. They exchanged a few words of farewell, and with that they went their separate ways. The next day brought a new set of challenges and tasks and John and Lucy once again found themselves immersed in their respective roles with the company. Despite their different positions, the memory of those early morning and evening coffee breaks lingered, a subtle reminder of the shared moments that connected them amidst the daily grind. In the weeks that followed, their interactions remained sporadic, limited to chance encounters during breaks or passing greetings in the hallway. Yet each exchange added a touch of familiarity to the office routine, a reminder that in the vastness of a bustling workplace, small connections could thrive. As they continued navigating the ebb and flow of their responsibilities, John and Lucy found solace in the simplicity of those brief moments, a shared cup of coffee, a friendly chat, a nod of acknowledgement. The office, with its varied roles and responsibilities, became a tapestry woven with threads of connection and camaraderie, creating a unique blend of experiences in the journey of Wilson Enterprises. As John and Lucy's friendship blossomed within the walls of Wilson Enterprises, they found solace in their coffee breaks, sharing not only the good moments, but also the challenges and frustrations of their work days. Their camaraderie extended beyond the office, and soon they became good friends who could rely on each other for support and understanding. One day, after a particularly exhausting work day, John and Lucy coincidentally found themselves in the same park. The familiar setting provided a welcome change from the office environment. As they spotted each other, they decided to meet and sat down on a park bench, enjoying the tranquility of the surroundings. The conversation began with a simple topic. The stars and their shapes in the night sky. They marvelled at the constellations, pointing out their favourite patterns and sharing stories about their significance in various cultures. The discussion seamlessly transitioned to more personal matters, leading John to share a part of his life he hadn't spoken about much. I have a mother, 
John began, his gaze fixed on the distant stars. But I also had a sister. She went missing about 15 years ago when we were playing in this very park. She was 18 and I was just 10. We searched everywhere, but we couldn't find her. I still miss her, and sometimes I come here hoping she'll reappear. Lucy, listening intently, felt a pang of empathy for her friend. She couldn't imagine the pain of losing a sibling, especially in such a mysterious way. Out of curiosity and concern, she asked, What happens? How did she go missing? John sighed, the memories resurfacing. We were playing, and in a moment she was just gone. We looked everywhere. There was no sign of her. It was like she vanished into thin air. Understanding the gravity of the situation, Lucy gently nodded. I'm so sorry, John. I can't imagine how tough that must have been for you and your family. The conversation took a sombre turn as Lucy shared her own story. Well, I... I don't have parents with me. They abandoned me here in this park when I was just four years old. I lived on the streets for a few years, and when I was eight, a man kidnapped me. We worked in his factory for years, but there... I found someone who became like a mother to me, an older sister. One day, we managed to escape and settled here in this city, scraping by and facing many challenges. John's eyes widened with a mix of shock and sympathy. That sounds incredibly tough, Lucy. I'm so sorry you had to go through that. Lucy smiled, appreciating John's genuine concern. It's okay, John. We all have our own struggles. She's the only family I have, and she's my mother in every sense. After their heart-to-heart -heart conversation, John and Lucy parted ways, each carrying the weight of the other's story. John returned home and shared the details with his mother, who felt immense sadness for Lucy and expressed her sympathy. At Lucy's home, she recounted her meeting with John to the woman who had become her mother. They had dinner together, finding solace in the shared understanding of life's hardships. That night, as John and Lucy settled into their respective homes, they couldn't shake the thoughts of each other's stories. In the quiet moments before sleep, they both felt a connection that went beyond the superficial aspect of their daily lives. The empathy they shared for each other's struggles strengthened their bond, and in the silence of the night, they hoped for brighter days ahead, where the echoes of their pasts would eventually fade, and the warmth of understanding and friendship would prevail. The next morning at Wilson Enterprises, Lucy and John greeted each other with a simple nod as they passed by the office. The day unfolded, and they both immersed themselves in their respective tasks, the busyness of work momentarily overshadowing any personal thoughts or emotions. One day, Lucy was engrossed in cleaning the office garden, diligently tending to the greenery. From his office window, John observed her. A sudden ache tugged at his heart, and he felt a rush of emotions he couldn't quite comprehend. It was as if his heart was trying to convey a message, but the words eluded him. Unsettled, he looked away, trying to shake off the peculiar sensation. As time passed, the inexplicable feeling persisted, intensifying whenever he caught sight of Lucy. During lunch breaks, when they coincidentally found themselves near the coffee machine, John's heart would race uncontrollably. One day, unable to confront the intensity of his emotions, he abruptly left, leaving Lucy puzzled by his sudden departure. Lucy, noticing John's odd behaviour, initially chalked it up to work-related stress. However, as the pattern continued, she couldn't shake the feeling that something was amiss between them. She decided it was time to confront the situation and get to the bottom of John's unusual behaviour. One evening, as the workday came to a close and the office emptied, Lucy spotted John still at his desk. Seizing the opportunity, she entered his office, casually locking the door behind her. John looked up, surprised by the sudden action. "'Why are you locking the door?' he asked, a nervous tone in his voice. Lucy, with a mischievous smile, replied, "'I don't want the mice to run away. You never know when they might escape.' 
Mice? Here? John exclaimed, his eyes widening. Lucy nodded, maintaining her playful demeanour. Yes, and you're one of them. John, now thoroughly confused, stammered. Me? Why me? Lucy, with a twinkle in her eye, retorted. Because you've been running away from me as if I'm a hunter trying to catch you. John was caught off guard, laughed nervously and took a step back. Lucy, undeterred, moved closer, her playful expression turning serious. No more running, Mr. John. Tell me why you've been avoiding me. As Lucy advanced, John felt a mix of nervousness and fear. Oh, no, it's nothing, he mumbled, stepping back. Lucy, determined to get to the bottom of it, continued her pursuit. There's something, and I want to know. Tell me. The office, now dimly lit, became an unexpected battleground of emotions. Lucy, relentless in her pursuit, closed the distance between them. John, with beads of sweat forming on his forehead, finally blurted out, I think I like you. A stunned silence enveloped the room. Lucy, frozen in place, processed the unexpected confession. John, realising what he had just said, felt a surge of panic and promptly fled the room. That night, both John and Lucy found themselves tossing and turning in bed, their minds consumed by the revelation. Lucy, shocked by John's confession, contemplated the implication of his words. Meanwhile, John, now grappling with the fear of rejection, wondered if he had ruined their friendship. The following morning, John arrived at the office early, anxiety gnawing at him. Lucy, aware of the awkward encounter, waited for him to enter his office. Once he did, Lucy, with a calm yet serious demeanour, entered the room and locked the door behind her. Sit, she instructed, gesturing towards a chair. John, feeling a mix of nervousness and anticipation, complied. Lucy took a moment, then spoke. I thought about what you said yesterday, and I've made my decision. As John anxiously awaited her response, Lucy uttered a single word that held the weight of their uncertain connection. Yes. A wave of relief washed over John as he realised that Lucy's feelings mirrored his own. Lucy, noticing his delayed reaction, couldn't help but smile at the mix of emotions playing across his face. In the days that followed, John and Lucy navigated the delicate balance between friendship and something more. During a lunch break, they decided to meet at the park, a neutral space where they could openly discuss the newfound complexity of their relationship. The park, bathed in the soft hues of twilight, provided a tranquil setting for their conversation. Lucy and John found a quiet spot and settled down, facing each other with a mix of anticipation and nervousness. Oh, so <laughs> what do we do now? John asked, breaking the silence. Lucy, a faultful expression on her face, replied. I think we should take it one step at a time. Let's get to know each other better outside the confines of the office and see where it leads. John nodded in agreement. Sounds like a plan. I like that idea. As they delved into a more open and honest dialogue, sharing their hopes, fears and dreams, the evening unfolded with a sense of newfound understanding. The park, witness to their evolving connection, became a symbol of the beginning of something more profound. The days that followed saw John and Lucy navigating the complexities of transitioning from friends to something beyond. Their interactions, now infused with a newfound awareness, held a subtle undercurrent of affection. The office, once a place of routine and familiarity, became a backdrop to a shared journey that promised both challenges and moments of joy. In the quiet moments between work and shared lunches, John and Lucy discovered the beauty of companionship that went beyond the confines of a typical office relationship. The transition from friends to something more brought with it a sense of excitement and anticipation for the future. As they embraced the unknown, John and Lucy continued to navigate the intricacies of their evolving connection, finding solace and joy in each other's company. Their first weekend adventure took them to a charming countryside town just a short drive away. After a hectic work week, they packed a small bag, hopped into John's reliable car and set out on a Friday evening. 
The town welcomed them with open arms, offering cosy bed and breakfast accommodations and local eateries with comforting homemade dishes. They spent the weekend strolling through the town square, exploring local shops and savouring the simplicity of a slow-paced life. Eager to continue their exploration, they made it a habit to embark on spontaneous road trips on Saturday mornings. Their destinations varied from nearby mountains to scenic lake shores. Whether it was a hiking trail discovered after a day's work or a serene lake just a short drive away, they found joy in the unplanned and the undiscovered. After a particularly busy work week, they decided to head to the coast for a breath of fresh air. On a Friday night, they set up a cosy campsite on the beach, the sound of crashing waves providing a soothing backdrop to their conversations. The weekend unfolded with lazy days on the sand, building sandcastles and enjoying each other's company under the sun. As the weekend came to a close, they returned home on Sunday evening, feeling rejuvenated by the sea breeze and the simplicity of beach life. Their travel escapades weren't limited to weekends alone. They often found pockets of time after work to explore nearby gems. They'd set out on the Friday evening, return on Sunday night, and fill the hours in between with adventures that spoke to the essence of their relationship. One Friday after work, they discovered a hidden gem, a small town known for its farmer's markets that came alive in the evenings. The aroma of freshly baked goods and the vibrant colours of locally grown produce captivated their senses. They spent the evening sampling treats, chatting with local vendors and enjoying the communal atmosphere. The simplicity of the experience made it a cherished memory in the mosaic of their adventures. Another evening after a particularly hectic week, they decided to escape to a nearby historic bed and breakfast. The creaking wooden floors and antique furnishings transported them to a bygone era. The change of scenery, even if only for a night, offered them a reprieve from the demands of everyday life. The beauty of their travel story lay not in the grandeur of destinations, but in the authenticity of the moments they shared. Whether it was an impromptu road trip, a quiet weekend by the coast, or an evening at a local market, John and Lucy discovered that love blossomed in the everyday, and that the ordinary held the potential for extraordinary moments. The days at Wilson Enterprises had been going smoothly for John and Lucy, their camaraderie continued to blossom and their understanding for each other deepened with every passing moment. However, one day, the tranquility of their routine was disrupted by a phone call that would change the course of John's life. As John immersed himself in his work, focused on the quarterly reports and future strategies, his phone buzzed with an incoming call. It was from his mother. Puzzled, he answered, Hello, Mum. His mother's voice on the other end sounded serious. John, I need you to come home as soon as possible. There's something important we need to discuss. Worry creased John's forehead as he asked, Is everything okay, Mum? Just come home, John. We'll talk when you're here, his mother replied before ending the call. Concerned and curious, John hurriedly gathered his belongings and left the office. When he reached home, he found his mother sitting with a sombre expression. "'What's going on, Mum? Why did you ask me to come home urgently?' His mother took a deep breath before revealing the reason of the urgency. "'John, the other members of the board of directors have conveyed that they are considering leaving the company unless someone from the Wilson family takes charge within the next two days. They want you to step in as the CEO to prevent any upheaval.' John's eyes widened in surprise. Me? But I've been working as a regular employee. Why now? His mother sighed. Oh, they believe your leadership is essential to keep the company intact. Oh, the decision is yours, but if you decline, it might have serious consequences for the company and its employees. After a moment of contemplation, John nodded. I'll do it, Mum. I'll take on the responsibility. I just need some time to prepare. Over the next two days, John found himself caught in the preparations. He drafted his resignation, 
informed his colleagues about the sudden change and prepared himself mentally for the pivotal role he was about to assume. Amidst the chaos, there was one person he couldn't forget. Lucy. He hesitated, but eventually sent her a message. Uh, there's a sudden problem at home, and I might not be able to get in touch for a few days. Take care. Lucy, though surprised by the abrupt message, understood the gravity of the situation. She replied with a simple, Okay, take care too. As John took the reins of his new responsibilities, he couldn't help but miss the camaraderie he had shared with Lucy. The office felt different without her, and he longed to share the news with her. The day arrived when John, now fully prepared to embrace his new role, walked into the office with his mother by his side. The entire atmosphere in the office seemed charged with anticipation. No one knew who the new CEO would be, and speculation buzzed through the air. The cleaning staff received special instructions to ensure everything was pristine for the grand arrival. As the clock struck midnight, the door swung open and John entered, accompanied by his mother. The collective gasp of surprise and realisation echoed through the office as the new employees saw John, the son of the owner, stepping into the role of CEO. The board of directors convened for a meeting to officially welcome John as the new CEO. The office was abuzz with activity, everyone getting busy to impress the new leader. The news of John's ascension spread like wildfire, reaching every corner of the office. Lucy, too, heard the whispers from her colleagues. Shocked and unable to comprehend the situation, Lucy decided to take a sick leave. The weight of the revelation pressed heavily on her, and she needed time to process the sudden turn of events. John sensed the ripple of shock and confusion among the employees. He felt a pang of regret that he hadn't been able to share the news with Lucy personally. Determined to rectify the situation, he decided to reach out to her. John called the cleaning staff and asked them to send Lucy to clean a supposed coffee spill. However, the response he received was unexpected. She has left for home. She wasn't feeling well. The realisation hit John like a ton of bricks. Lucy had learned about his new role from everyone else and he hadn't had the chance to explain it to her. Disappointed in himself, John understood the gravity of the situation. He had unintentionally hurt someone he cared about deeply. As John settled into his new responsibilities, the absence of Lucy weighed on him. He couldn't shake the feeling that he had mishandled the situation. The days passed marked by busy meetings, strategic discussions and the challenges of leading a company. However, the personal void, left by Lucy's absence, lingered. As John sat in his office, he decided it was time to address the issue. He dialed Lucy's number, hoping she would answer and allow him to explain, but she didn't answer. So he decides to meet her face to face and explain everything. So he messaged her to meet at the park and give him one chance to explain everything. The evening air was crisp as John wrapped up his work for the day. He left for the park to meet Lucy. As he entered the park, he noticed Lucy, the girl who had captured his heart. Without hesitation, John quickened his pace, closing the distance between them. Lucy glanced up, her eyes reflecting a mix of surprise and something else. Perhaps a hint of concern. He reached her, and without a second thought, he enveloped her in a warm hug. I missed you, he confessed, the words carrying a sense of longing. Lucy, however, didn't reciprocate the embrace. Instead, she gently pushed him away and looked at him with a seriousness that took him aback. John, we need to talk. I'll keep some distance until you explain everything, she insisted. Perplexed, John took a step back, his eyes searching hers for answers. Lucy sighed before she began. I get it. You had your reasons for not telling me, but it's time you share what's been going on. John hesitated for a moment, the weight of his secret pressing on him. I'm sorry, Lucy. It's not that I didn't want to tell you. 
I promised myself not to reveal that I was the owner of the company until I secured the CEO position. Now that I have, I can share it with anyone, including you. Lucy raised an eyebrow, a mixture of surprise and frustration crossing her face. It's not about the company, John. It's about us, she said with a measured tone. I'm not upset that you kept this from me. I'm upset that you chose me as your girlfriend. Confusion clouded John's features. Well, why is that the problem? Because, John, we come from different worlds, different social statuses. You're a wealthy young millionaire. I'm just a poor cleaner. People will see me as a gold digger and blame me for everything, Lucy explained, her eyes reflecting the inner turmoil. John took a deep breath, acknowledging the gravity of the situation. I thought about that, Lucy. It's not going to be easy, especially for you. She nodded, appreciating his honesty. Exactly. You understand what I'm trying to say? Yes, I do. John admitted, his gaze fixed on her. But, Lucy, I want you to know that I care about you. I'm willing to face the challenges together. I won't let you bear the burden alone. Their conversation delved into the intricacies of John's hidden identity and the uncertainties of their future. Lucy expressed her fears and concerns while John reassured her that they could overcome anything as long as they faced it together. In the quiet of the night, with only the distant sounds of the city as a backdrop, John reached out and gently took Lucy's hand. You don't have to carry this on your own. I'm here for you. No matter what comes our way, we can face it with courage. Side by side. Lucy looked into his eyes, searching for sincerity, and found it. His assurance resonated with her, and a soft smile played on her lips. Okay, she whispered, trusting him at that moment. John took a deep breath, a sense of relief washing over him. So, shall we continue our relationship? He asked, his eyes hopeful. Lucy nodded, her trust in him evident. Yes. As they stood there beneath the starlit sky, hand in hand, the challenges ahead seemed less daunting. John and Lucy, from different worlds, were determined to navigate the complexities of their relationship with courage and unwavering support for each other. The night had smoothed out the creases of misunderstandings between John and Lucy. They decided to grab a bite to eat, choosing a cosy restaurant where they could unwind and enjoy each other's company. Over plates of delicious food, they shared stories, dreams and aspirations, gradually strengthening the bond between them. The ambiance of the restaurant, coupled with their open communication, allowed for a sense of comfort and understanding to blossom. The evening unfolded into a pleasant memory, a testament to the resilience of their relationship. John, true to his word, dropped Lucy off at her home. The night air was cool, carrying with it the promise of a new beginning for the couple. As he left her doorstep, he couldn't help but feel a weight lifted off his shoulders. The truth had set them free and their connection had deepened. Upon arriving home, John was greeted by his mother, who was waiting anxiously in the living room. "'You're late today. Was work too hectic?' she inquired, concern etched on her face. John, choosing not to divulge the details of his personal life, nodded in agreement. "'Yeah, it was a busy day.' His mother, ever caring, offered, "'You must be hungry. Would you like something to eat?' With a polite decline, John assured her, Oh, no, Mum. I ate something in the office. I'm not hungry. Satisfied with his response, his mother let him be and returned to her activities. Little did John know she made a call, asking someone to keep an eye on her son. Concerned about his well-being, she wanted to ensure that he wasn't facing any challenges he couldn't handle alone. In his room, John lay on his bed, reflecting on the events of the day. The smile that Lucy had brought to his face lingered and he couldn't help but feel grateful for the newfound understanding in their relationship. The next morning, Lucy, with a sense of purpose, arrived early at work, 
Leading her cleaning team, she meticulously cleaned the entire office, ensuring everything was in perfect order. As part of her newfound responsibilities, she entered the CEO's office and began tidying up the space. In a moment of spontaneity, she decided to leave a hidden note for John, a small gesture to convey the warmth of her feelings. The note, tucked away discreetly, read like a love letter, expressing her joy in having cleared the air between them. Later that morning, John arrived at the office. As he settled into his routine, he noticed a small piece of paper beneath his table. Curiosity peaked. He picked it up and unfolded the note. A smile played on his lips as he read Lucy's heartfelt words. It was a sweet surprise, a gentle reminder of the connection they shared. As the day progressed, work piled up and John found himself engrossed in a sea of tasks. Feeling the pressure, he instructed his assistant to leave for the day and called Lucy, asking her to join him in his office until he finished his work. Lucy agreed and within 20 minutes she arrived, with a tray of snacks and drinks. The atmosphere in the office transformed into a more relaxed setting as they shared a simple dinner during work. Once the work was finally done, John stood up and stretched. Oh, thanks for keeping me company, Lucy. Let's call it a day. She smiled, understanding the demands of his job. No problem, John. Any time. He dropped her off at home and the routine repeated itself as they bid each other good night. John returned home, avoiding dinner with his mother once again. In the solitude of his room, he lay on his bed, the events of the day swirling in his mind. Despite the challenges, he found solace in the companionship Lucy provided. A flicker of hope for a future where love could conquer all. The morning sun cast its warm glow over the city as Lucy diligently went about her work. She was cleaning the windows in the office, lost in her thoughts, when she noticed John's mother approaching her. Perplexed, she wondered why Mrs Wilson was heading her way, but a quick realisation struck her. It had to be about John. Mrs Wilson greeted Lucy with a forced smile, her tone carrying an air of formality. Lucy, dear, I need to talk to you. Lucy, a bit apprehensive, responded, Oh, of course, Mrs Wilson, how, how can I help you? They found a quiet corner in the office, away from prying eyes. Mrs Wilson, without beating around the bush, delved into the topic that had been on her mind. Lucy, I've been observing your relationship with my son, John. I must say, I have concerns. Lucy, taken aback, asked, Concerns? What do you mean? Mrs. Wilson's expression turned stern as she accused. I've heard rumours, whispers, people calling you a gold digger, a girl who's after a man for his money. Lucy felt a sharp pang in her chest at the harsh words. She took a deep breath before responding. Mrs. Wilson, I assure you, I'm not with John for his wealth. I genuinely love him. Money has never been a factor for me. Mrs. Wilson wasn't easily convinced. Lucy... You come from a different background. I don't want my son to be taken advantage of. You need to leave him alone. Lucy, hurt but determined, defended herself. Mrs Wilson, I understand your concerns, but love doesn't see social status. I care deeply for John. I believe our connection goes beyond material possessions. The conversation grew tense as Mrs Wilson continued to express her doubts, and Lucy fought back with words of sincerity. Despite Lucy's efforts, Mrs Wilson left with a warning, her parting words hanging in the air. Lucy, contemplating whether to tell John about the encounter, ultimately decided against it, thinking he had enough on his plate with work. She buried herself in her tasks, trying to shake off the sting of Mrs Wilson's accusations. In the evening, when John met Lucy, she greeted him with a warm smile as if nothing had transpired earlier. They chatted casually, sharing snippets of their day, and then Lucy left for home. John, on the other hand, returned to a tense atmosphere at home. His mother wasted no time in questioning him about his relationship with Lucy. So, did you both decide what to do? She inquired, a hint of accusation in her voice. Confused by the sudden interrogation, John asked, What are you talking about? 
Mrs. Wilson sighed dramatically. Oh, it seems like she didn't tell you anything. John, growing increasingly agitated, demanded, Tell me what, what did you say to Lucy? With a sly smile, Mrs. Wilson revealed, I met her today. I asked her to leave you and tell me her decision. Shock and anger flashed across John's face. You did what? Why would you do that? Mrs. Wilson, unmoved, replied, Because I care about you, John. I don't want you getting involved with someone who might take advantage of you. An argument ensued between mother and son. John defended Lucy, vouching for the sincerity of their relationship. Mrs. Wilson insisted that Lucy was not the right match for him, citing concerns about their different social statuses. The heated exchange ended with John storming off to his room, leaving Mrs. Wilson frustrated and worried about her son's future. Meanwhile, at Lucy's house, she recounted the encounter with her mother. Lucy's mother, understanding Mrs. Wilson's perspective, tried to explain the mother's protective instincts. She cares about her son, Lucy. It's natural for a mother to be concerned about the person her child chooses as a life partner. Lucy, torn between her emotions and understanding Mrs. Wilson's worries, had a difficult time sleeping that night. On the other side of the city, John, too, found sleep elusive as he grappled with the conflict between his mother's concerns and his love for Lucy. The next day, John approached Lucy with a heavy heart. He apologised for his mother's rude behaviour and the unsettling words she might have said. Lucy admitted that she was initially hurt, but found solace in her mother's explanation of Mrs Wilson's concerns. I understand, John. Your mother cares about you. I respect that. Let's not let this affect us, Lucy reassured him. They shared a brief but meaningful conversation, finding a way to navigate their challenges ahead. With a renewed sense of understanding, they both returned to their respective tasks, determined to face whatever obstacles lay in their path. In the quiet moments that followed, John and Lucy silently vowed to weather the storms together, knowing that love could conquer even the most challenging circumstances. The weekend had finally arrived, providing John and Lucy with a much-needed break from their busy lives. They had decided to meet at a newly opened cafe at 11am, eager to spend quality time together. The anticipation of the day filled the air as both of them completed their morning tasks. Lucy, who lived near the cafe, arrived a little early. She took a moment to admire the cosy ambiance of the place and selected a comfortable spot for them. The aroma of freshly brewed coffee and the soft hum of chatter around created a perfect backdrop for the moments they were about to share. Soon enough, John arrived, a warm smile lighting up his face as he saw Lucy waiting for him. They exchanged greetings, and John joined her at the table. The cafe's menu offered a delightful array of dishes, and they decided to start with some brunch. As they engaged in light-hearted conversation, the atmosphere was charged with the joy of being together on a lazy Sunday. After enjoying a satisfying meal, they decided to indulge in some desserts. Just as they placed the order, John excused himself, leaving Lucy wondering about his sudden departure. He returned moments later, a large bouquet of vibrant flowers in his hands. Lucy's eyes sparkled with excitement as she exclaimed, What is this? John, with a mischievous smile, replied, Just a little something to make our day even more special. He got down on one knee, holding out the bouquet, and asked a question that would change their lives forever. Lucy, will you marry me? Overwhelmed with joy and emotion, Lucy's eyes welled up with tears. She nodded vigorously and managed to say, Yes, John, a thousand times yes! They shared a sweet celebratory kiss and the cafe staff, catching wind of the momentous occasion, brought out a small cake to mark the special day of their proposal. The couple cut the cake together, savouring the sweetness of the moment. The cafe, filled with the echoes of laughter and the scent of freshly baked desserts, became a witness to the beginning of a new chapter in John and Lucy's journey. As they wrapped up their time at the cafe, 
Lucy suggested that they visit John's mother before heading home. The idea seemed fitting, considering the significant step they had just taken in their relationship. John agreed, and after paying their bill, they set out for Lucy's home. The drive was filled with a mix of excitement and anticipation. Lucy's home, a small but beautifully decorated space, radiated warmth and love. It was a reflection of the close-knit bond Lucy shared with her mother. Upon reaching Lucy's house, they found it adorned with cheerful colours and a charming decor. Lucy knocked on the door, calling out to her mother. Mum, John is here to meet you. Her mother's voice echoed from inside. The door's open, come in, my dear. They entered, greeted by the comforting scent of home-cooked meals and the inviting atmosphere of a place filled with familial love. Lucy guided John inside and announced, Mum, come out. John is waiting for you. Her mother's response was a simple, Yes, dear, I'm coming. As she emerged from her room, the atmosphere shifted. The moment Lucy's mother laid eyes on John, her face turned pale, revealing a mix of sadness and shock. John, too, felt a wave of unease wash over him as he saw the unexpected person in front of him. The revelation that unfolded in Lucy's small living room left her utterly perplexed. The confusion etched on her face mirrored the bewildered expressions of both John and his sister, Maria. As Lucy looked from one to the other, she sensed an unspoken connection between them, something deeper than what was initially apparent. Seeing John's eyes welling up with tears, Lucy's concern heightened. "'John, what's going on?' she asked, her voice a mix of worry and confusion. John, overcome with emotion, didn't respond immediately. Instead, he rushed towards Maria, the woman Lucy believed to be her mother, and enveloped her in a tight embrace. Maria surprisingly reciprocated the hug, a gesture that only intensified Lucy's bewilderment. Caught in this emotional encounter, Lucy implored, "'Someone please tell me what is going on here! Why are you both reacting like this?' John, wiping away his tears, finally composed himself. He stepped back from the embrace and took a deep breath. Lucy, that's my sister. My Mary. Lucy's eyes widened in disbelief. No, that can't be right. She's my mother, Maria. And her name isn't Mary. It's Maria. Both John and Maria exchanged a knowing glance before Maria spoke up. Oh, my God. I can't believe this, Lucy. My name was Mary. I had to change it to hide from those people. I had to change your name too, honey. The weight of the truth hit Lucy like a tidal wave. She felt a mixture of shock, confusion and a sense of betrayal. The ground beneath her seemed to shift and she couldn't fathom the reality that was unravelling before her. Overwhelmed, she fainted, collapsing onto the couch. Concern etched across their faces. John and Maria rushed to her side. Maria took a small bottle of water and sprinkled some on Lucy's face. Slowly, Lucy stirred and opened her eyes, staring at the two figures before her as if they were ghosts from another world. John spoke softly. Lucy, it's okay. Take a moment to process everything. Lucy, her voice trembling, whispered, What, what just happened? Why didn't you tell me the truth? Maria sighed and took a seat beside Lucy. I'm sorry, Lucy. I should have told you the truth a long time ago, but I couldn't bear to lose the connection we built over the years. As Lucy tried to make sense of the situation, Maria began to recount the story of their past. When we were playing at the park, I was kidnapped and forced to work in a factory. Years later, you came into my life and we formed a bond like mother and daughter. To protect you, I told you I was your mother and we ran away to start a new life here. Lucy struggled to process the truth. The woman she believed to be her mother was, in fact, a long-lost sister of John. The shock of this revelation lingered, but at the same time, there was a sense of relief that she hadn't lost the woman who had become a mother to her. As Lucy grappled with her emotions, John suggested, Why don't we go and surprise our mum? She's been waiting for both of us for so many years. It's time to reunite the family. Maria 
nodding in agreement, said, You're right, John. It's time to bring everyone together. After a few hours of driving, they arrived at the house where Maria and John's mother lived. The anticipation hung in the air as John knocked on the door. A mix of nerves and excitement played across his face. The door swung open, revealing John's mother. First, John stepped inside, followed by Lucy. John gestured towards Maria and formally introduced her. Mum, uh, meet Maria, and uh, Maria, meet my mother. A moment of confusion flickered across John's mother's face as she processed the introduction. Then, as she looked at Maria, a gasp escaped her lips. She took a step back, her hand covering her mouth in shock. John, sensing his mother's emotional state, rushed to reassure her. Oh, Mum, it's a big surprise, isn't it? Lucy and her mother are here to reunite with us. His mother, tears welling up in her eyes, stared at Maria, and then at Lucy. A wave of recognition and disbelief washed over her. Maria! Is it you? Maria nodded, tears streaming down her face. Yes, Mum, it's me. John's mother, overcome with emotion, approached Maria. She enveloped them in a tight embrace, tears of joy streaming down her face. I never thought I'd see you again. My family is finally back together. Lucy, witnessing the reunion of mother and daughter, couldn't help but be moved by the scene. The initial shock and confusion began to fade replaced by a sense of warmth as she saw the happiness radiating from the family she had unknowingly become a part of. The room filled with laughter and tears as the long-lost family shared stories and caught up on the years they had spent apart. John, Lucy, Maria and Maria's mother sat together, basking in the joy of their unexpected reunion. Seated in the quiet living room of the Wilson household, Maria took a deep breath before sharing the painful chapters of her past with her mother. Mrs Wilson, eager to understand her daughter's journey, sat across from Maria, a mix of concern and anticipation in her eyes. Mum, Maria began, her voice carrying the weight of years gone by. After I was kidnapped, life became a nightmare. Forced to work in that factory, each day felt like an eternity. I was tired, scared, felt completely lost. Mrs. Wilson's eyes softened with empathy as she reached out to gently hold Maria's hand. I can't imagine what you went through, Maria. But you're safe now, and that's what matters. Maria nodded, grateful for her mother's understanding. Yes, Mum, but... In that darkness, a ray of light appeared. Lucy, she came into my life like an unexpected blessing. She continued, recounting the story of how Lucy, a kindred spirit, had entered the factory and formed a bond with her. Lucy, she was like a daughter to me, a daughter who shared the pain and the hope. In those difficult times, she became my strength. Mrs Wilson listened intently, realising the significance of Lucy and Maria's life. So you both ran away from there? Maria nodded, a faint smile playing on her lips. Yes, Mum. Lucy and I decided to face whatever lay ahead together. We ran away, leaving behind the shadows of our past. It was tough, but we clung to each other through the ups and downs of fates. As Maria spoke, the room felt filled with a sense of resilience and shared endurance. The bond between Maria and Lucy, forged in adversity, had become unbreakable. And you found your way here? Mrs Wilson remarked, her eyes reflecting a mix of emotions. Maria nodded, her gaze meeting her mother's. Yes, Mum. We found our way here to you and John. Life led us back to family and I couldn't be more grateful. Mrs Wilson, moved by her daughter's story, squeezed Maria's hand. I'm sorry you had to go through all of that, but I'm glad you found each other and that you're back where you belong. Maria smiled, a tear glistening in her eye. Me too, Mum, me too. The shared understanding between mother and daughter bridged the gap created by years of separation. The night concluded with shared laughter, a warm family dinner and the comfort of knowing that no matter the twists and turns of life, they had found their way back to each other. As they retired to their respective rooms, 
The air was filled with a newfound sense of belonging, and the promise of tomorrow held the potential for a future filled with love, understanding, and strength that comes from the bonds of family. Maria's mother, Mrs. Wilson, had invited Lucy and Maria to stay with them, acknowledging the long-lost daughter's return. The living room, once witness to the unexpected family reunion, now radiated warmth as the three women sat together. Mrs. Wilson, a kind smile gracing her face, turned to Lucy. "'Dear, I am sorry for treating you like this,' she said, genuine remorse in her voice. "'I didn't understand the depth of your bond with Maria. "'Can you find it in your heart to forgive me?' Lucy, touched by the sincerity in Mrs. Wilson's words, nodded with a smile. "'Of course, Mrs. Wilson, I understand. "'I appreciate your apology.' Mrs. Wilson, overcome with emotion, pulled Lucy into a warm embrace. Call me mum, dear, from now on. We're family and family forgives and supports each other. The atmosphere in the room shifted as Mrs. Wilson called John closer. Taking the hands of both Lucy and John in hers, she spoke with a twinkle in her eye. You both should get married now. I will not oppose your relationship from now on. It's time for happiness and unity in this family. Lucy and John exchanged glances, a mix of surprise and joy in their eyes. Mrs. Wilson's words were a beacon of acceptance and love. John, smiling, said, Thank you, Mum. Lucy echoed the sentiment, Thank you, Mum. This unexpected turn of events marked the beginning of a new chapter for Lucy, John, Maria and Mrs. Wilson. The small living room, once witnessed to revelations and emotions, now echoed with the laughter and chatter of a family reunited. The day unfolded with shared meals, stories and the promise of a future filled with love and understanding. Meanwhile at the workplace, John and Lucy navigated the day with newfound happiness. John found himself energised and motivated, ready to tackle his responsibilities with renewed vigour. Lucy too worked diligently, content in the knowledge that her personal life was aligned with the harmony she had longed for. Word of their relationship, now free from obstacles, started to spread through the office grapevine. Colleagues whispered and speculated, and soon the news became the talk of the entire company. The couple, unfazed by the attention, continued their work, sharing knowing glances and supportive smiles. In this joyous atmosphere... Maria decided to organise a small celebration in the office to share their happiness with their colleagues. She brought in a tray of chocolates and announced, Everyone, I have good news to share. My brother John and Lucy are getting married. The announcement was met with cheers and applause from their co-workers. The joyous atmosphere spread like wildfire and soon the office was abuzz with congratulations and well wishes. Mrs. Wilson's daughter had returned, and the office embraced this heartwarming news. As Maria distributed chocolates, she couldn't help but feel a sense of contentment. Her family was reunited, and the happiness echoed beyond the confines of their home. John and Lucy, now openly embracing their relationship, shared a tender moment amidst the congratulatory cheers. Back at the Wilson household, the evening unfolded with a celebration dinner. The air was filled with laughter, shared stories, and the promise of a future where forgiveness, understanding, and love prevailed. Mrs. Wilson, beaming with pride, looked at the trio, her long-lost daughter, her son, and the woman who had become an integral part of their lives. The dining table was adorned with delicious dishes, symbolising not just a family meal, but the union of hearts that had weathered the storms of separation and misunderstanding. Each bite carried the flavour of acceptance and every shared laughter echoed the joy of a family made whole. As the night drew to a close, Lucy and John found a moment alone on the porch, looking at the stars that glittered in the night sky. The world seemed to pause as they reflected on the events that had transpired, grateful for the twists of fate that led them to this moment. John, his gaze fixed on the stars, spoke softly. Who would have thought the simple walk in the park would lead to all of this? Lucy, leaning against the porch railing, smiled. Life is full of surprises, John. 
I'm just glad ours turned out to be a beautiful one. He took her hand in his, fingers intertwining in a silent promise of a shared future. The night air carried whispers of a newfound happiness, and as they looked at each other, the stars above seemed to shine a little brighter. In the embrace of this newfound family, John, Lucy, Maria and Mrs Wilson felt the warmth of belonging, the strength of forgiveness and the promise of a tomorrow filled with love. The journey ahead, though unknown, held the potential for a life rich in shared moments. Overcoming challenges and savouring the simple joys of being together. And as they embraced this new beginning, they knew that no matter what lay ahead, they were bound by a love that had withstood the test of time. In the warm embrace of family and friends, John and Lisa's wedding day arrived, a celebration of love and unity that echoed through the grand halls of the beautiful venue. The air was filled with anticipation as guests gathered, adorned in their finest attire, ready to witness the union of two hearts. The venue was adorned with an array of flowers, their vibrant colours accentuating the joyous atmosphere. White roses and lilies, symbolising purity and new beginnings, adorned every corner. The soft glow of fairy lights added a touch of magic, casting a warm and romantic ambiance over the entire space. John, at the altar, stood tall in a handsome suit, his eyes filled with an undeniable happiness as he awaited the arrival of his bride. The room buzzed with whispers of admiration as Lisa walked down the aisle, escorted by Mrs Wilson, who beamed with pride. The ceremony, officiated by a friendly minister, unfolded with heartfelt vows exchanged between John and Lisa. The promises spoken were simple yet profound, resonating with the sincerity of their commitment to each other. The exchange of rings marked the sealing of their union, a symbol of the endless circle of love they had found in each other. The room erupted in joy as the couple walked hand in hand down the aisle, a symbol of their journey together. The celebration continued in a lavish reception hall, where tables were adorned with elegant centrepieces and soft candlelight. The aroma of a delectable feast wafted through the air, tempting the taste buds of all in attendance. As the night unfolded, it became a tapestry of shared moments, laughter and the promise of a future filled with happiness. The newlyweds, surrounded by the love and support of those they held dear, revelled in the magic of their wedding day, a day that marked the beginning of a beautiful chapter in their lives. With each passing moment, John and Lisa's wedding became a cherished memory. A celebration of love that lingered in the hearts of all who attended. The grandeur of the occasion, coupled with the genuine warmth of the gathered company, made it a day to remember, an ode to the enduring power of love and the joy that comes when two souls embark on a journey together. As the years unfolded, John and Lisa's love deepened, creating a life rich with shared moments and unwavering support. The home echoed with laughter and the joy of a love that had stood the test of time. On their golden anniversary, surrounded by family and friends, the couple reflected on a life well lived. Their children and grandchildren added an extra layer of happiness to the celebration, a testament to the enduring strength of their bond. As they danced to a familiar melody, John whispered to Lisa, We've built something beautiful haven't we? Lisa, with a warm smile, nodded. Yes, John, our journey has been extraordinary, filled with love and happiness. In that moment, the couple embraced the contentment that came with a lifetime of shared dreams and fulfilled promises. Hand in hand, they sat beneath the starlit sky, grateful for the enduring love that had woven their story into the fabric of time.